What is up guys, B Doubles back here with a brand new video and today we're gonna be playing some Fellforge mode It just came out yesterday and we played all the way to max and got a huge amount of kills over 50 kills day one solo playing and uh, That's just the beginning guys. I play a really cool awesome build uh, Melee, but not exactly what you might have expected if you were expecting rendo P And I think it's gonna be a whole lot of fun as you can see I'm dual wielding as well So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's jump right in Oh, and by the way, guys, like the video. Guys, Fell Forge mode is out, and I am here on Little Fell Boy today, which I'm actually gonna hide the helmet for a second because, to be honest with you, you gotta see his face, okay? And we are gonna be dominating on a melee hunter build that I have just rolled that came out absolutely busted. Now, I'm gonna be going into Fell Forge mode today with the intent of trying all of the new stuff they mentioned in their most recent update post, and I think it should be a lot of fun. So everything's on my bar now. Let's see, I have the blink. Guys, this is so crazy. Let me first tell you guys the abilities I have. Healing Touch, Mongoose Bite, Raptor Strike, with the aspect of the Hawk Rock Biter Weapon, Divine Protection Disarm, Blink, Wind Shear, and Hammer of Justice. Literally as good as it gets for PvP. I just don't have a slow, but I do have a gap closer, and I also have pretty good skill cards as well. You can see I did use the disarm and the wind shear uh, to my advantage. I've got the aspect of the beast and heroic fury with the intercept and the death coil carded really really strong. For my lucky cards, counter attack, really hope I get that over 30. Colossus smash, bypasses 30% of their armor, big damage, we're gonna go 2 H based. Last stand, super good for PvP. True Shot Aura, Aspect of the Beast, but cost a talent point. The first thing I want to show you guys is this. Empowered Insignia of the Burning Legion plus one. This is something everybody gets now, and you get to keep leveling it up. You can spend Fell Power in order to do so. Actually, they changed this with a hotfix like three hours later to where you don't actually have to spend any Fell Power at all. Instead, it just automatically upgrades itself, and every single time you turn it in, you'll get a better version of this trinket, which removes all harmful movement impairing effects. Basically, it's like the old school human racial and a really good trinket on a two minute cooldown but it gives pve power and pvp power at the same time really really good so we'll start saving for that i did do some preliminary stuff on this guy just to get him ready because i wanted a decent build and i had to find out what was kind of going on i've only done this for maybe 20 or 30 minutes before i started this recording what i found out is that people are really 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 geared already they didn't do a complete wipe people have their old characters and they have their vanity collection stuff for heirlooms so we're going to even the playing field ourselves go with a primary stat of Agi and see if we can make the hunter build kill people and dominate people in PvP. Before we go out there, let's go ahead and check out some other stuff. Now, you can see Beezlebub right here. He now has a Mystic Scroll shop option. You can buy different enchants. You have a random chance for different amounts of getting different rarity enchants. This is not as good as what I recommended. I wanted it all to be free on Fellforge mode, but I guess it's still better. Let's test it before we complain too much because uh, gold is easy to come by on Fell Forge mode and you might actually get something you want. Lucky for us though, because they didn't do a hard reset, I actually have all of my Fell Forge mode random enchants unlocked already, including legendary ones. And we're gonna be going with Deadly Bite in this video, where my Mongoose Bite and Counter Attack will apply a bleed effect that then increases the damage of my Raptor Strike by up to 75% by stacking over time. Really, really good if you think about it. And with that in mind, it's actually something I can go ahead and put on because I should have the orbs for it as well. So let's go ahead and slap this on our trinket, giving us a little bit of an edge. So before we actually jump out into the world, let me just read out to you guys the Fell Forge update so you know what's going on today. Fell Forge mode comes out at level 20 PvP game mode where you level 1 to 70 and you go hard with the following new updates. Tutorials for all the Fell Forge NPCs, good for new players. Beezlebub giving Mystic Enchanting Scrolls for gold, we just saw that. New weapons and armor available from Beezlebub. Uh, actually, before we continue, let's go ahead and check that out. As far as I could tell, this is what they mean. If you go here now, you have a level 70 PvP gear option. For 500 gold, you can choose a PvP set of item level 105, and it will give you the whole thing, and we'll see what that's like as well. That's not too bad. I like the idea. In terms of other things, I've been clicking around, haven't really seen anything that stood out, but there could be other things that we'll figure out as well. Now, just to go back down the list, new cosmetics to earn, okay. Uh, TBC is unlocked, mentioned that, that's really good. New 
quest chain. I just showed you guys that with a new Legion insignia and a brand new Fellforged event that apparently we'll get more information on on Friday. That's going to be huge as well. Now, they did go over what this event might actually entail. I can show you this as well. Uh, Fellforged heroes begin their journey in the Twisting Nether. A new event is in development for the Twisting Nether, an endgame Fellforged activity that helps max level Fellforged heroes unleash their power in a grand climax before dying well and beginning a new journey. So, endgame Fellforged content could be sick. That's uh, to be seen on Friday, perhaps. So, with all that stuff out of the way, uh, let's get out into the world. So, the way this works is you go up to the Legion's Lexicon and you start getting some quests. I think we're just going to PvP for now. I'm going to go for Fight for Power. I need to kill three players and I'll get 10 gold, 300 fell power, and uh, we'll get a lot of XP for killing those players as well. So, with my OP setup, let's jump into the world, guys. Uh, Fortnite style. Western Ashenvale, let's make it happen. All right, I am a little worried because I have a big weakness. Even though my build's really strong, I have no slow. I cannot fight a ranged player that knows what they're doing as a result of that. It's not a skill thing at that point. They'll kite me indefinitely, and uh, I have no way to win. So why would you choose a fight where you literally have no way to win. So I need a melee guy. A melee guy, and it's within three levels for this, by the way, as well. So up to level 23. Oh, here's a guy. Overdose. I'm going to destroy this guy. Blink right on top of him. Go for the mongoose spite and the raptor strike. Go for the disarm right off the bat. I'll go for the stun at the tail end of the disarm. Like that literal one to zero seconds. Uh, I'm just going to keep spamming everything. Boom. Got the stun off. Three seconds. Raptor strike queued up. Oh my god, he's getting destroyed. Oh, he freaking LOH at half. Poor overdose, bro. Poor overdose. Okay, let's go ahead and gnome racial that hamstring. That's what I'm talking about too. So it's not just uh, range guys getting away from me. It's these types of dudes. That's a uh, last second interrupt. Uh, going for the uh, slow and then trying to get some distance on me, which I don't want dead, right? Nice, guys. Got a kill right off the bat, level 23. We got that dude's healing pod as well. And we start our draft. Uh, let's see, what do we get? Teleport Moonglade. Oh my god. Arcane Explosion, I guess. So bad, dude. All right, so I've already gotten some talents. 33% of my melee weapons average damage over six seconds with the deep wound, so more bleed damage. Really good when you know you don't have that much because you're using a 2H. It's going to hit hard, right? 20% uh, more crit with Savage Strikes. 6% more Hunter damage ability. Not too bad as well. And like I said, we are agi base, but I'm trying to think of what to do before somebody attacks me right now. At the lower levels, there aren't that many options damn it oh a max level guy that's really op is on me now oh no it's a freaking smite build we've been in these kind of places before i divine protection i kind of wish i had a pet he's gonna have a heal that's what sucks about this he is bound to have a heal and if he has a heal i do technically auto lose i'm pretty sure let's go for the healing touch yeah i knew it oh my god he has icy veins yo how am I supposed to play the game against a guy with icy veins to prevent the interrupt with 1800 mana and he has a heal? Well, I know. We run around the tree until we leave combat with him. Yeah, he has two seconds before combat goes away. Yeah, you completely lost that, dude. That's so bad. I would say that's worth it. I don't feel bad about it. All right, I don't want to fight any casters. I hate all casters right now. They all are going to have so many advantages on you, especially at low levels, if they're built even remotely correct. I'm talking Starfire. I'm talking Holy Fire. You know what I'm talking about. Like the big damage things and uh, any kind of way to CC you and you are out of this game, bro. The only thing competing right now melee-wise is actually going to be rend op that's why i made sure to start with this disarm seven seconds of i can't play my character that's actually pretty hilarious against anybody that's playing rend op all right uh mongoose spite into the raptor strike going for the disarm i'm actually gonna go ahead and gnome racial that hamstring because he can't reapply the disarm and oh no stunned immediately still no hamstring on me and i'm actually really thinking hard about this there he finally got it off i'm gonna trinket it i actually thought he was gonna run bad trinket bad trinket i apologize guys i thought he was gonna run and heal I'm trying to pre-plan, you know what I mean? Like, it makes sense to think that's what I would do. I would get some distance and try to, you know, oh, get some distance and try to make something happen. That actually made me think I need shoot on my bar. You never know. I need shoot on my bar just in case somebody gets away. Let's go for the fire blast in this draft. It's extra damage and I could use extra damage. What else do we got? Ooh, blessing of kings. Yo. All right, we uh, did not complete our quest because we have to kill three because I've already been here before. Let's see. What else do we got? Let's go ahead and get new abilities. A lot of people forget this and so we'll have a tiny advantage maybe. I still don't want to fight a caster, but as you can probably kind of tell based on two high level casters being near me recently, those are the guys that are kind of leveling up the fastest. I need to kill somebody like anal puncture right here because like this is the only guy I'm going to be able to kill. Look, forgive the language, but can somebody explain to me why the fuck this guy put an X for the puncture part of his name, but not for the anal part? <laughs> don't understand dude it's so good though what a good name now we can't actually get him out from cormaladon until we get 50 fellforged souls fellforged souls are what we get for killing players by the way can we kill you 
Nope, you're one level too low, damn it. All the people I need to be fighting right now because my build doesn't scale properly until counterattack, and that could be level 30 or it could be level 55, I just don't know. Uh, but all those people are too low. All right, skill-based is here, and you know if his name is skill-based, he's playing something that's complete cancer, so respect, bro, on the name. Okay, honestly, I can't find anybody else that's in my level range. Let's just leave and go to a different area where we might actually find somebody within range to fight. I'm gonna start off by going to the protection tree and taking improved hammer of justice. 1.5 seconds more on the duration of hammer that's gonna give me a five second stun boys on a 45 second cooldown that is no joke now for the remainder four uh what do i do with those four talent points i really don't exactly know let's go with something simple though let's go for maybe something like more crit more crit can't be too bad right now uh yeah let's just jump back out into the world central ashen veil i guess oh my god there's a 24 can we get to him we're actually getting attacked right now destroyed he's gonna get destroyed he's melee and, oh my god, instant disarm. 53 on the fire blast, and we're gonna go for the raptor strike. We're critting a lot. We are currently disarmed. I need to get disarm reduction. Just understanding that that's prevalent, knowing I use it myself. All right, I'm gonna go for the stun right here. Five second stun, no trinket. Oh man, that's really, really deadly, man. All right, he's dead. GG, bro. Level 29 off that, exactly what I wanted to have happen. There's a 27 over there that we can beat. I'm going to run that way. And uh, this is all garbage. I'm going to go with Devotion Aura. A little extra armor is not horrible. So we're already doing good. Three kills to start. And I've gotten plenty more kills right before that as well, before we got this character ready. So we're really doing exceptional. 300 fell power and 10 gold for this quest. And I can get another one now to kill, let's see, five players for 50 gold, which I think is doable. Now, one thing you might not know if you haven't played this before is that in Felforge mode, you actually unlock passive stats, passive abilities. I should say. They're not all just stats. Some of them are stats, like aptitude right here. Some of them are also uh, more experienced, and they have a variety of different buffs. You get these just from turning in these quests, and uh, it's almost like a Felforge level that you kind of uh, passively have, and you're leveling that over time, getting all these passives as you die, as you kill, and as you turn in quests and progress. It's pretty good. There's no casters until I get a slow, and then I auto-beat them all. And the more I look at it, like, is Windshear even good? Like, I think of Windshear being good, because once upon a time in Ascension, it was actually pretty exceptional. But nowadays, with the balancing they've done to interrupts maybe it's one of the worst ones i could be getting my hands on again there's a variety of reasons why i don't want to fight a caster uh but one of them i haven't mentioned is that they can heal literally forever it's a bottomless pit of mana and it's not really fair all right level 29 he saw me first his name is wakiza and we don't have any way to get up to him quickly all right this guy just fell skill based i got into combat with him via the uh, fire blast he's gonna die let's stun him i think this guy is super dead guys He's freaking arcane missiles, and he has a way hand of protection to uh, prevent my damage. He still loses, though. I can trinket this, and we can actually interrupt that, and that guy got the uh, negative uh, infernal off me. I said negative. I mean enemy, but okay. That guy's dead, and also I'm hearthstoning before you can attack me with your 2300 HP. Intercept! Yo, my skill card's here. I'm also gonna reduce the cooldown on intercept just to start off, right? Five seconds and we'll eventually do 10, and then get five more yards with the capstone bonus as well. This is working really, really well, guys. I was gonna say I'm gonna go to Hillsbrad Foothills with the quest. I think I'm just gonna go without it now. If I can find like a bunch of 27s and 8s, I could probably kill every single one of them. Typically, the people that go for group PvP are really, really bad. All right, can we go on huge right here? All right, he has a friend. All right, it's Hugo and huge, man. I don't have a slow. This is so cancer. You need to stop everything. This needs to stop now. This, this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. This is cancer. This, this is so much cancer. Not having a slow is so bad. Can I kill these guys? All right, intercept on that. Can I kill these guys? I potted. I shoot, I shot him and killed him. Oh, this other guy's gonna kill me. Oh my god. Okay, a feral. Level 20 feral. Do we auto win against the feral? Disarm's pretty bad. That's a nice thing for him to know. A nice thing for him to uh, have as an advantage. He divine protections insta, but you're running at the same time. So this is something you never want to do. I'm gonna divine protection, but he's attacking me, right? Actually, I don't know what the hell this guy's doing. Mongoose spite. I have 46 souls, by the way. Oh, he missed his fear and I trinketed insta. So here I am thinking I'm doing a pro gamer move and insta getting out of his fear and killing him. And then it doesn't matter, but I interrupt it. Like this guy's literally gonna give up right now. Oh, he's running. We got a runner. Can we shoot you for the swag? No, he died anyway to the dots. Okay, I'll take that, bro. All right, what do we get this time? What do we get this time? Arcane shot? Eh, okay. All right, guys, 49 Felforge souls. One more and we can get a mount. All right, take the uh, wolf off him so it doesn't steal my kill. 
And then we should be okay. This guy's basically giving me a free kill. I'll take it. We can get back our progress for losing to that guy. Or those two guys, I should say. Okay, level 26 off that. All right, what do we get this time? Uh, no auto shot. I'll take Mark of the Wild, though. That's pretty good. That's some free stats. Frost armor, not too bad, actually. Interesting pick, right? A lot of you guys might think, why the hell would you want that? You're not a caster. If anybody attacks me, though, they're slowed. I don't have a slow. That's an advantage I'm willing to take. Let's go ahead and get all of our upgrades as well. Maybe find like a level 23 body him real quick and uh, get out of this area. Let's start off with a blink. He misses his Nova. See what I mean? Sometimes you could just tell. Oh my God. This guy has a way to reduce all melee damage taken. See what I'm talking about? Casters are crazy, dude. Let's gnome racial. It could have been quicker. But I really wanted to ponder the situation to be real with you. I only have one gnome racial. He has evasion too, yo. He has evasion. Arcane shot that misses, obviously. Oh my god, yeah. Super fast fear as well. I think he talented into it. Another way to CC me. The disarm counts because I'm melee. Oh my god. All right, I actually went for the interrupt on his fear. This is all I've got. Yo, this is dumb. See what I mean? Oh my god. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. It's not over. I can still heal. Arcane shot. Raptor strike queued up. It's not over. I think this guy loses. Oh my gosh, dude. Oh, I went the wrong way with the fear. He couldn't believe it, GG. Oh, the RNG on the fear, man. That actually saved me. What do we get? Multi-shot? Actually, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I talent into it. I'm gonna go ahead and go into improved counter-attack because if I do get counter-attack, it allows counter-attack to disarm my target for three seconds. This is pretty good. Uh, but if I don't, it's still 30% reduced duration on disarms. Lots of guys have disarms. People are smart. We did complete our quest though. Let's go B, turn it in. And yeah, we're starting guys. We're getting back into the 30 bracket. God, I can't wait to get to Outland. So one thing I just realized, you can save your hands of fate and use them. Like that's something that's like a normal thing I could do right now. So I could get something better at this level that I could not have got at level 20, or I could get nothing. Blessing of Might, exactly. Not too bad. Wow, imagine getting nothing after talking it up. Okay, let's go turn this quest in like I said. There we go. Five gold for that. And as I told you guys, we can now get, let's see. Oh yeah, Bellforge Tome Apprentice riding so there are mounts you can get as well but you can also use any of your account bound mounts which is almost anything right so i can use that now go to my mounts very very nice fell saber for this mode why not but we can go back out there i'm just gonna go for kills just remember guys that the higher level we get the better the skill of the person if not the skill it's going to be the build or it's going to be uh, again i lack some advantage like again not having a slow okay let's go on honey honey he is a caster but he did just get into combat i will stun him with the fell guard on him and guys you take every advantage you can get you know these guys have an innate advantage on me right now so why would i not do this mongoose fight trinket insta have the uh everything and by everything i mean divine protections up as well all right he's dead gg bro should have paid attention i was right there i can't even feel bad i was literally right there he could have seen me all right what do we get we get the intercept nice so you don't get all their loot anymore basically all of it i'm getting like melon juice and one green now dude all of these guys picked somebody else to fight and did not pick me Oh, a different guy came! Dude, he stole the fight. He literally stole the fight, and this guy has wing clips. So sad. So sad, bro. I'll disarm you at the same time if it even matters. Looks like your lightning bolt spamming, though. So it doesn't matter that much. Raptor Strike. Pull the Searing Infernal off just in case I can take the damage. I'm okay with that. Dude, uh, Leo H's? Or <laughs> Leo H's? Leo H's, bro. Oh my god. Can we kill him? Multi shot? Can we kill you? Come on. Dead. GG, 100k XP, level 33. All right, still not getting good items though, but we can kill the Searing Infernal. And yeah, that's pretty good though, overall. Okay, so we did end up making at least one mistake. We took Aspect of the Beast before I got Aspect of the Hawk, and now it's basically a dead roll. I am level 33 now though. I gotta find a new place to go. Let's go Kodo Graveyard. They have a quest actually to kill somebody over there. Just one player, I'll take that. Ooh, there are people here. Pretty well geared people though. This guy's getting destroyed. Okay, we're dropping in Sadernar, hoping we find somebody to fight here. All right, we got on this guy. We got this guy right before he hearthstone, bro. Disarm to start, yes. I was just looking everywhere for a kill. Nobody was in my level bracket, man. All right, Raptor Strike Mongoose, man. You guys know the drill. Crit central into the stun just to finish you off, right? Oh, into the arcane. Into the multi? Oh, wait. I just want to finish you off with the multi, bro. Okay, there we go. You died anyway. I'll take it. Level 35. Yes. All right, what do we get? What do we get? Smite, Ren, Shadow Burn. I'll go Ren. Guys, this is so good. We're actually making it, man. The only thing I'm lacking right now is counterattack. If I get that, it might actually be enough for not having a slow. Wing Clip would be good as well, though. Okay, turning the quest in. 10 gold off that. Every little bit of gold counts big time, by the way, remember, guys? Because I want that 500 gold pack for gear at 70. But let's turn in our Fell Power here. Upgrade 
upgrade our insignia of the burning legion this is custom remember this just came out for ascension fell forge mode again the higher you get the less people you're gonna find and the more cowardly they might be because they really don't want to reset so i'm not blaming them for that i get it okay i'm only making a point it's gonna be hard to find people or the people you do find are gonna be really 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 overpowered hopefully i'm in the overpowered category right now because i'm not backing down oh god here's somebody and i'm in a fight all right go for the way to uh, reduce damage as the disarm goes away i'm not doing damage that's not good i thought i was gonna beat this guy that's not good guys later that same evening yo i just got counterattacked this run guys so i ended up dying to somebody and you know what gg to that guy uh and i killed four more players real quick and we're almost where we were before counterattack is huge though so i'll take that for sure and a drain soul for the void walker possibly wow counterattack oh yeah and we get the talents at this level by the way as well so that we can actually get counterattack off more often killer instinct three percent more crits and 100 percent chance to allow the use of counterattack after using mongoose spite uh if Every eight seconds big big damage guys 295 on the counter attack 243 on the mongoose bite so it is inevitable that you're gonna die sometimes it is pretty depressing when it happens i guess because uh, a lot of the times when you're gonna die it's not gonna be your fault but that's okay you just gotta you know yell one time and then be okay you know what i mean like just be fine and then get lucky right like i just needed the counter attack in every fight that i've lost so far if i had counter attack and i was over level 30 during the fight uh which is just one i guess but still in that fight counter attack would have made the difference so i'm pretty excited to see how this ability plays out and uh, hopefully i'm right about it all right here's a girl i think her name is ellie fell let's just go for the stun remove the hamstring during the stun all right i'm gonna literally get away from her during that i'm just going to uh do that as well the entangling roots right on top of that evasion all right there's the disarm counter attack look at those crits I don't even have to use my other spells i'll go for the curse now it doesn't really matter it's too late this person's dead GG, bro. GG, good fight. Level 36 off that one. Okay, we're almost where we were before. Let's see, what do we get? Lesser healing wave. I'll actually take that. Stone skin or hellfire. I'll take the uh, lesser healing wave. So, you know what, guys? I think I'm going to go with two butchers here because here's the thing. I don't need to use a two-handed weapon. I don't have weapon scaling abilities. I have AP scaling abilities, specifically the agi kind, the ranged AP kind. Uh, so, let's just go for this, man. They also look really cool. Yeah, the damage goes up a lot. 362 with my dual wield. With my single target 2H1, rather. 321. So, literally plus 40 okay here's somebody i think we can kill them the problem is they're a caster let's go with the intercept first counter attack i'm actually gonna go with a full nine yards insta trinket into the stun full nine yards means i went for the curse of agony let's just go for uh arcane missiles here i'm gonna get out of it now because they're standing still interrupted counter attack mass entangle on the fear so at least they can't move the healing thing man i don't have a way to reduce healing except for what i have by default insta blink off that can i get a counter attack off got it they can't move on the counter. Curse of Agony back up. Going for the mana pot, by the way. Oh, I got the intercept off right there. Counter attack as well. I have a wind shear. Nice. Level 38. What do we get? Oh, first blue and it's just a trinket. Okay, what do we get ability wise though? Ah, uh, arcane shot, I guess. Yo, I will definitely take that though. That is really nice. All right, there we go. Boom. Kodo graveyard quest complete in that regard, at least. Let's go see if we can kill more of those guys and do the other one as well. The PVE one. Oh, here's a guy. Hoodley fell. All right, let's get on you. Intercept. Counter attack. He literally trinketed that. All right, I guess I'm in this one. Blink. Mass entanglement. Oh, here it is. Oh, got the stun. Got the stun. Getting the mana back. Uh-oh, fear. That's not good, dude. Arcane shot. I am going for the divine protection intercept right here. Oh, he has the blink. Another arcane shot. I do have another mass entanglement coming up. That's all I've got, though. No. Oh, my God. Blink was on cooldown, too. Here it is. Oh, oh. Take it, bro. GG. He insta left, too. I didn't get any loot from that. He didn't even want to see that. Okay. Uh, oh my god, it's all horrible. Heroic strike, I guess. Level 40, though, guys. And I only need a couple more Kodos to get out of here. I'm practically not gonna find anybody here at this level 2, so I'm pretty much okay to complete this quest. I was being very cautious about it, and I just ran into that level 39, man. Very close fight. I didn't use as many things, though. And it was a caster as well, and I also don't have a slow once again. It's always gonna be relevant for the caster fights, guys. It's just always gonna be relevant. I also went two points once again into Furious Attacks to reduce all healing done on my opponents. I hope you guys are noticing just like using unorthodox spells to your advantage is probably the main 
one way to win. For example, I hit that guy with multiple arcane shots, and I'm a melee hunter, but it played a massive part, because I think it probably did quite a bit of damage on him, if I had to uh, guess. I mean, if I look at my damage on him, arcane shot was number three, actually. Okay, fell figured. Let's go on this guy. Start with the intercept on this one. Boom. Going for the dot. The counterattack. He can't move, and he's disarmed. I have the tr uh, talents for that. Oh my god, and he's mass entangled. Another counterattack into another disarm. Does share diminishing returns, I think. It certainly does. This guy's doing insane damage right now, and I have no idea how he's doing it. All right, counterattack though. Stunned when he's low. Thank you. Oh my goodness, yes. That was a really clean one too, because I had so much HP when I won. I did finally get something decent from that guy, but unfortunately it's for casters. All right, turn the quest in. Got level 44 and shackle undead, I guess. This is all pretty much bad. Okay, I'm killing Gordunny ogres right now. Nobody is here and maybe nobody will get here. So I'm just going to take advantage of it and get some levels if I can. So I'm going to keep myself topped off as often as I can with the lesser healing wave. It's a very mana intensive build, even with the talents I've taken to reduce the mana cost of my hunter abilities. And I really need to make sure I have mana for things like Blink and Death Coil, etc. Maybe I should reduce that mana cost of Blink, actually. Like, I could take out the Blood Craze. I probably don't need that. And we can go into Improved Blink. Not only do I have no mana cost and a reduced cooldown on it, but I also reduce all damage I take by 20% for 3 seconds after using it. But I'm so scared right now because getting the jump on somebody is actually enough to win the fight. Like, that's all you need. You could be so close skill-wise or gear-wise or build-wise, but if you get that jump... And that opponent has one or two seconds of not being able to do what you're able to do. That literally does win people to fight. I know. That's something I do quite a lot. I make sure I get to that point. Okay, level 45 off an ogre too. All right, I'm finally going to go for this two pack. I didn't want to fight two at the same time, but I did just ding. So we'll go for it, I guess. We'll risk somebody ganking us. I'm going to go for the lesser healing wave literally at 77%. That's how scared I am. You have to think this is not normal because typically at like 45, you think that your journey is about to end. But no, I've got to go through Outland man okay last ogre i guess this was a lot less scary than i thought question mark let's go ahead and hearthstone and turn it in like i said as we get higher and higher level there's just going to be less people because very few people can make it this far remember when you die you're done so okay level 48 off a of knoll and uh nothing too good maybe the victory rush just to stay topped off actually victory rush is really really good right now i just realized i don't have to lesser healing wave at all basically because as you can see i have a weak r is already set up for it from a previous character i could just keep playing and every time i kill somebody i'll be just low enough to where well i'll just show you guys uh going on to the next one you can see i'll be able to victory rush them and be at full okay guys quest complete and there is a legion cash here this is yet another unique thing for fell forge mode it's always been there though but if you're new you might not know about it there are chests scattered all around the world only for fell forge players that you can open if you fit within the level bracket for the area that you're in in this case 45 to 49 i'm on the tail end of it i can open it do we get good stuff oh my god more intellect gear okay let's hearthstone and turn this quest in in. and we enter winter spring will anybody even be here i doubt it dude i wonder if it's gonna be smooth sailing all the way to 70 i might be like one of the very first ones to get there who at least played the game properly i'm sure somebody hid the entire time or you've got group questers that you know devalue the mode i'm not talking about cheating basically i'm talking about actually getting there properly solo questing man so one of the reasons i wanted them to make random enchants free once again is not for me i'm fine as you can see i can make builds with it i'll be okay but uh there's a lot of cancer in the meta this is so much cancer that i can feel the tumors growing on my back and uh they didn't account for that see i did i say if you make all the random enchants free then the meta at least changes i mean right now we know what it is you've been seeing it you've been watching it rendo p basically as far as you go for any kind of melee unless you really can make it past the gauntlet and then maybe you could do like backstab ambush or something like that or maybe melee hunter as well like i am but i really do feel like i'm gipping this this is really a worse version of rendo p right now but fun definitely fun but it's a caster meta it's a bottomless pit of mana versus somebody that doesn't have mana type of meta and then spamming heals and uh, just the randomness that could come from the meta that would arrive with a bunch of different random enchants that people have free access to probably would have been ideal they could still potentially do something like that i don't think their change is really good though now if it was actually buying individual random enchants that would have been really good unfortunately you're just buying a random chance it's no different than reforging but you pay for it imagine that dude i mean it's kind kind of different because you can pick the rarity but there's like 50 billion of every rarity so is it really good anyway we did the yeti quest let's at least go turn that in and get some xp finally guys i see somebody to fight 
Let's go. Oh my god, I've been looking forever. Mongoose by into the counter attack. I'm losing. Uh, oh my god, she got away with the uh, Night Elf Racial. Oh, I also have that, bro. I have Death Coil too. All right, they're Death Coiled. They also seemingly have like a Void Walker shield on them. All right, stunned. We'll go for the counter attack. Oh my god. Oh, I could have blinked it, but I was too slow. We'll blink right now, though. It would have put me in a weird direction. I'm not too sure how good that is, Cone of Cold. I can slow you too. I just got to get used to it. Might as well curse you because I'm not on you. All right, Mass Entanglement. Mongoose Bite. Get rid of that weapon. See ya. Cone of Cold. Oh my god, no weapon has to suck. This guy's actually really strong. They just LOH'd. Everybody has LOH'd. It seems like it would be a good pick, you know? But it's really not that good if you think about it. Cone of Cold once again. All right, intercept. Nice, I think we're gonna get him. I just had to take the uh, NPC off him. Oh, Arcane Shot! Is he gonna die to the bleed? Oh, he died to the bleed. GG, dude. That has to suck. There's another guy right there watching too. Oh my goodness. All right, and we get a uh, Berserker Stance. I'll actually take that. All right, this guy just got on me, which sucks. I wasn't done looting. All right, Death Coil on this guy. Disarm. I'm not doing any damage for some reason. I think he's sacrificed, but like I'm doing like literally no damage. What's going on? Why am I doing zero damage? So look, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. This ends up being extremely, extremely depressing. I just want to figure out why I didn't do any damage the entire fight. Y'all have to understand that up until this point, I had already killed at least probably 30 to 40 people. And I was in my head thinking, by lieu of that, if you just take my deaths obviously being in the single digits, nobody should beat me by this big of a margin. It should not be possible. So there's only two possible explanations. Number one, I was outplayed. Or number two, something about this guy's build is broken as hell. So let's analyze both possibilities real quick. First of all, let's analyze the most important part, right? It's the elephant in the room. Was I simply outplayed? Well, the first thing to look at are the random enchants. Who has more and whose enchants are better? If his enchants are worse, then I definitely came into this with an advantage, and that's not a good thing. But it was Sinister Strike Shadow Bolt, so he's playing Shadow Strikes, and that means he has the epic enchant first off, and probably the Master of Shadows legendary enchant as well second off. Uh, now, I just want you guys to look at this guy's buffs right now. He has Mark of the Wild on, and I don't actually know, with the Shadow Form, with Aspect of the Beast, with Fire Water, which is uh, like plus AP or plus strength, with the Rampage and the True Shot Aura, this is all perfect. With Soul Link Void Walker, okay? And then, uh, two debuffs, or actually no buffs, that look like they're a part of Master of Shadows and Shadow Strikes itself. Um, and I think, I, oh my god, this dude was completely decked! I went for the Death Coil into the 7 second Disarm. This dude could not play the game. Uh, for 10 seconds straight, alright? I really want that to be understood. 10 seconds straight. I'm at 4400 HP, basically instantaneously at the beginning of the fight. He hasn't lost HP, but he's about to be basically CC'd for 10 seconds straight. So this guy has the sacrifice shield and his void walker still alive. It's not vanilla, right? So that's how that works, okay? Now he charges me, and this really needs to be understood. This dude charges me. I was at 4,500 HP only a moment prior. I got hit for an 812 crit. I stunned this guy for five more seconds. I have made him incapable of playing the game for 15 seconds of this fight. But in the time that he had to fight, he actually got me to 2,400 and I have not done damage to him yet. But one thing I want you guys to understand is my point is that I'm controlling him. I'm the one using abilities. He's only doing damage to me and passive healing so far. And then I feel forced to run and I think to myself it's a long shot but I do have mass entanglement. It doesn't end up working. But are you guys seeing what I'm trying to say here? So by my estimation, I don't think that this was anything but a build based fight. Now you might think I did that for me. Actually, I randomly came up with the idea to analyze this at the last second for you. I thought, hey, it's a little cool segment. Sometimes people get really, really upset in game because, uh, for some reason, humans can't accept that not everything is black and white. Did you know there's nuance in the world? And what that means is that if you assess a situation, sometimes you will actually be able to figure out, let's say in a 1v1 game or a PvP game in general, that maybe the reason that you lost was not necessarily entirely in your control. <laughs>
but we are 61 so we have made our rounds back and we are about to go to outland with outland quests and we're gonna be able to give this a good go i think the best way to do this is to find fell chests in outland which i kind of remember where they are based on when i was not playing fell forge mode and i just saw them and commentated on their existence in previous videos uh the reason being though is because all of the gear is way too expensive as for my talents i'm where you saw me everything melee hunter everything survival everything bleed based relatively speaking furious attacks uh weird things here and there like the blood craze with uh, the second wind combo i mean really at a certain point you just pick stuff right and yeah that should be good so you can see the new teleports now hellfire peninsula zanger marsh so we'll go to hellfire now right here is where i remember seeing quite a few chests coincidentally i also have a quest to do here as well so We'll see if anybody else is out here. Oh my god! Dude, this guy hunters marked me when I was way out of range, and he put me in respite so he can't attack me. Oh god, these guys are not taking a lot of damage. I really need some outland stuff. I think the best thing about this, though, is like, this is the zone that was meant for Fellforge mode. I mean, it's literally outland. It's literally where the Burning Legion is, and now I'm literally on their side pretty cool actually if you put it into perspective like that i'm actually ditching the area we were just at because it's a very short pvp timer and the op guy was just gonna freaking kill me and ruin my run i really wish they would like put a leaderboard up that said how many kills everybody had they would make it fresh every single time it came out and, and then everybody could know who's got the most kills so far and maybe who came in top three uh depending on the competitiveness maybe even up to top five maybe they get like a prize that would be so cool it's the little things that i always mention hoping that they do something about uh that's a good idea in my opinion that's a really good idea does that mean i'd be in first i don't know but what i will say is that i've done everything ascension has wanted me to do it's not like they didn't think by the way about the fact that healing is op they did think about it they just thought to themselves well if you're a melee and a healing caster is op pick up furious attacks we moved it down in the tree hey it's actually good and i will say it's obviously way better than if it was lower in the tree because then you'd have no chance at a certain level bracket but i still think healing is way too op and I don't even think that's unfair to say. Oh, wow, that was a lot of stuff. And I see a Shadow Ren Longblade, which I can put on now. We'll just go ahead and do that. That's really good. Let's go ahead and make sure we're buffed up again. So with this version of the build, by the way, I came out pretty similar to what I had before. Instead of Mass Entanglement, though, I have things like Scatter Shot. Oh my god, that's a lot of good loot. Uh, I have the Death Coil once again. I've got everything you should expect me to have, honestly. I mean, there's no real surprises here in many ways. Like, for example, I actually did get rid of the Wind Shear at level 20, and I got the Hamstring instead. And I thought that would be good. I also had no choice by the way but i thought to myself i was losing way too much to not having a slow so i might as well get the hamstring since it was offered to me i did have to give up the wind shear but i did pull it again which is nice uh the fact of the matter is before i ended up pulling it again ooh, look at this level 62 do we get anything good oh mark of the wild that is actually good but before i ended up pulling it again i had many many fights uh, i think two exactly where i lost because they had a heal and I did not have an interrupt. Can you imagine the unluckiness there? I really do think since you can't have everything, but you so desperately need everything, that they just need to lower the amount of CC and stuff that people can get. Just imagine if everybody's power level was like cut in half. You give them all the damage attacks that they need so they can actually build stuff, but then you drastically limit the scatter shot hammer. Like I shouldn't have death coil scatter shot and hammer of justice right now with hamstring and wind shear. Does that make sense? Like I'm literally a god right now. Uh, and the only thing that's going to beat me is a greater god. It's like a literal titan that's the only thing that's going to beat me somebody with better gear basically or probably a guy with a better version of my build like in other words not playing melee hunter but has everything else that i have right like i'm still very much playing this on like super hard mode by playing melee hunter any other build caster wise or rendo p wise and i would be a literal titan right now I think we'll try hard another video and go dwarf for sure. I've also got to finish leveling in Wrath Classic, but still, man, like... Okay, two points and point of no escape. If I counterattack, I get 6% more crit with my melee attacks. Pretty good, considering that's all I do right now is Mongoose Bite, counterattack, Whirlwind now, I got that. Into the Mongoose Bite, into the Hammer of Wrath, dead. And level 65. Okay, what do we get? And nothing good. Lesser healing wave, I guess. Okay, level 66 so far, guys. Exorcism, Unending Breath, and Hurricane. I guess Exorcism. Huh. You know, I could try to, like, convert Crusader Strike, Hammer of Wrath, Exorcism. Like, that's an actual route. Like, that's the full combo for Sanctity, right? Yeah, Sanctity of Battle. You get off an Exo, you get a free Hammer of Wrath. Kind of nutty, actually. I mean, it is Fellforge mode. Let's go for it. Seal of Command. It reminds me of my Wrath Pally. I guess I wouldn't be using Raptor Strike if I go this route. So we could try it i'm just gonna commit guys i'm actually gonna get rid of the mongoose bite but okay guys i was able to get to level 70 and i didn't find anybody else on the entire outland journey nobody at all was there uh and so i just went ahead and got my 500g 
free PvP set. I'm committing to the pally. We're doing a switcheroo here at max. Okay, I chose strength gear. It looks like they give you genuinely a full set of gear. This has defense rating on it though, which is kind of sus. Let's put it all on and see if it's even good if we just like grab the whole nine yards. Oh, they give you an axe. They give you a sword. They give you a spear. They give you all sorts of stuff. That's good. Oh, wow. I look really cool. That's actually a really nice sign. Twisted heroism gear. Uh, chance on hit to heal myself. Attack power. It's pretty much vanilla stuff, but they boosted it up to 70. I'm actually really happy with the way this looks and feels right now. Okay, so I want the epic enchant in sword we trust. I'm going to test these little mystic scrolls and not be too stubborn. Maybe it'll be good. Let's click it. Okay, I get specter and I also get pyro shot. Yeah, it was a long shot. It's pretty much the worst thing ever, guys. Like, I don't think when I give my final, like, uh, determination on Fellforge mode day one that I'm going to be very nice about this part of the uh, new updates. Okay, so I can vendor everything else that I don't need from that 500G pack and I end up with, uh, probably about 30 gold. I just realized there's one single copy of one with the light on the Fellforge auction house right now. I'm going to take it. This is what we're going to try to use. This says my physical damage is cut in half, but my holy damage goes up by 40% of my strength. I am fully strength based. I have holy wrath, hammer of wrath, exo. That's probably all I've got. Also, crusader strike will give me two stacks of holy spec, if known, which is going to give me more crit, I think, or something along those lines. We'll look at it in a moment. And holy spec also does some other stuff that's completely irrelevant to me we can't utilize all of it but it's literally the best we could do on this random game mode 11 minutes later okay so i've concocted a really weird holy build i've gone into all the standard pally ret stuff that boosts holy damage and stuff like that but i've also gone into an absurd amount of crit so what that means is that even with 102 item level i've got basically 40 percent holy spell crit and 31 percent almost 32 percent melee crit i'm running into a problem though which is that there's too many quests like where am i gonna find anybody dude Dude, it's literally gonna be impossible. I feel like it's actually gonna be impossible. <laughs> I hate this game. I actually lost to the NPCs and I beat the player. Isn't that the saddest thing? Holy crap. All my progress down the toilet just like that. Well, you know what, guys? This is actually a really good caricature for what Fellforge mode really is. You know, we're, don't forget, Friday, apparently, we see some new max level stuff. We'll probably end up leveling another guy. Hey, at least I got a little legendary cash, I guess. Let's see if I get anything worth it. Oh, I clicked it. Nothing happened. Wait, you all saw that too, right? I clicked it and... Okay, okay, all right, let's go ahead and do the giveaway from the last video, a Koa giveaway, two giveaways, one for members only, one for everybody, and then let's go ahead and wrap up the first Fellforge video, guys. Also, don't forget for this video as well, leave a comment in the comment section below with your in-game name on the Alar server, and leave the word Koa if you want a chance at getting my last alpha key, you could just say for Koa, uh, at least for now, uh, in the next video. I'll just go ahead and say that uh, this is pretty much fun, but I did do a pro and con list, and I only had five things on my mind number one for pros just one thing the new loot table is uh pretty good if you didn't notice throughout the video killing random mobs gives blue gear now like a single piece at a time which is pretty nice the cons though is healing is overpowered cc is out of control uh there needs to be a more forgiving mechanic because uh you have crazy high prices for things and then you let people lose everything off the craziest tiny thing like npcs there at the end right uh new enchant shop might as well not exist exist uh too many quests spread all over the place in outland couldn't find anybody what you don't know is before i found that kill i literally personally dropped in every single zone and got the quests for all the zones uh that have them so that i could see specifically where people would go it took a really long time guys uh and yeah if those things could be fixed that would be really really great hey guys so quick thing that just happened as i was editing the video i wanted to toss this in um they actually added a map tracking part for fell Forge mode where you can see all the other Fellforge players on the map. I didn't have this the entire playthrough. It was massive though after the playthrough and I want to say this is the biggest change yet. This is a massive pro. It's actually big enough to where it makes up for a lot of the cons. I still want them to balance more but things actually feel slightly different right now so we'll see how that looks in the next video. I know that those are a few cons more than the pros but I will say it's still Fellforge. It's still fun for me. I will still do it. Uh <laughs> 
<laughs> so let's go ahead and do the giveaway, guys. Okay, guys, let's do this correct this time. First of all, we'll do the every man giveaway. Let's see who wins. Huey, I think, or Huyu. Anyway, it equals his in-game name. He says, love your vids. His actual name, Austin Dean. Uh, I keep it up, man. Koa. Yeah, dude. Well, congrats. You got Koa. So, okay, dude, we have your name right there. We can go ahead and give you, where is it? Conquest of Azeroth supporter pack. Grats, man. Enjoy playing Koa. Love McDoubles. There you go. And for the channel member, I went ahead and rolled this and we got the power company who just won in-game name Dubcat. He says, I saw a Fire Frost Wind Rager build in Mythic today. His top damage was Frostbrand Weapon and Firebrand, or he means the uh, Flame Tongue. It was pretty good. Can't wait to play Star Color, by the way, on Koa. Hey, that's sick, man. I might actually try the Wind Rager build. A lot of people have been talking to me about that. And Star Caller was one of the more fun ones I played. So yeah, grats, dude. You're in. So there you go. We got his name, Dubcat, Conquest of Azeroth supporter pack. Grats, my man. Big doubles. There you go, bro. But okay, guys, uh, let's go ahead and end it like this. First of all, I'll show you guys how many kills I got. 50 world honorable kills, so I'll take it. I'm gonna make a different character, though, and it's not gonna be Melee Hunter, but if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. First day, Fellforge wasn't too bad. Might be better on Friday. I'll see you guys in the next one. Big doubles out. <laughs>